How can you brew beer in your kitchen? Let's have a look. Hi, I'm Joanne, the Beer School Lady, and I teach beer lovers how to taste beer with confidence and how to build their knowledge of the world's favorite beverage. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I make beer in my kitchen. We're literally in my kitchen. Got a brew on there. I'm gonna do a second batch right now. We're gonna make an American Pale Ale, and this is how you can make about six pints worth in your kitchen. So you're gonna need a big soup pot. In here, I've got five liters of water and I'm bringing it up to the correct temperature for my mash. That is gonna be 72 degrees Celsius. And now we wait. The mash is when grains are steeped in hot water. We do this to extract enzymes and starches to create fermentable sugars. Those fermentable sugars are then by yeast to create carbon dioxide and alcohol. It's also going to add colour, flavour and aroma to our beer. So let's have a look at the grains we're using for this American Pale Ale. For the American Pale Ale, I'm going to use Maris Otter as one of my base malts. We're also using wheat. We're going to use some Pilsner malt. We need some oats. I'm going to use some carrot amber. This is going to add a lovely colour to our beer. For hops, I'm going to use Yakima Chiefs pink boots blend now this is a blend of hops that were created by the pink boot society and this is the 2019 version and um, it's going to give us according to the pack citrus stone fruit wood and grass notes and um, so i think this is going to make a really nice american pale ale i'm hoping for a biscuitiness from the malt and then some lovely tropical fruity flavors from our hops i'm also going to be using american ale yeast so our water has come up to 72 degrees Celsius. We have it at this temperature because when we add the grains, it will lower. And we want it at about 68 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna hold it at that for the mash. That's a ideal temperature to extract as many enzymes and starches and allow them to create fermentable sugars as is possible. So here are my grains. They're gonna go in my pot here. Um, then we are going to give them a little bit of a stir to make sure that they don't clump up because we want as much of the grains touching the water as possible. Don't want any dry bits. And then we will leave it for an hour. And I'm gonna check the temperature every 15 minutes to make sure it stays around 68 degrees. You're gonna need a big spoon and you're gonna need a thermometer. Right, so I'm gonna give these a stir. At this point it kind of looks like porridge. It smells lovely because you've got all that lovely kind of cereally smell. Delicious. Right, not being too bad. You want to make sure there are no clumps of grain in here. Feels quite good today. I think I've got the end of some bags of grain, so I think I've got quite a bit of kind of dusty stuff and I think that's going to produce a stuck mash which I will talk about later when we get to the lawtack and the sparge. Right we're now going to leave that for an hour and every 15 minutes I will check the temperature to make sure it stays at 68 degrees Celsius. Once we've mashed our grains we will then remove the water which is now called wort from those grains. That is the lautering process. We'll also sprinkle over more water to wash sugars from those grains. That's called the sparge. You'll need the sieve to be able to remove the water from the grains and then another pot to create your liquor and sparge water, which is warmed up water that you're gonna wash the grains with. I'm gonna weigh out my hop so I'm ready for the boil. I've opened this packet up. It smells absolutely amazing. I think this is gonna add really beautiful flavors to the beer. I'm gonna need six grams of these to go in at about 20 minutes towards the end of the boil. But then there's gonna be some that are gonna be added in after fermentation in a dry hop. The rest of these will now go in the freezer. I've got a little section in my beer fridge that's a freezer um, and I keep all my hops in there. If you freeze them, you can use them again. Um, I suggest that you just always check them, make sure that they don't smell cheesy because that will mean that they've gone off. But generally you can make your hops last quite a long time especially if you're only using small amounts if you keep them in the freezer so my mash from my american pale ale has been going for about 30 minutes at this point i'm now going to start heating up my four liters of water that i've got in another pot this will then be called liquor 
hot water in brewing is called liquor and we're going to use that as part of the sparge. Once your mash is finished you want to remove the grains from the water which is now called wort and is full of fermentable sugars. To do that we're going to lauter it removing the grains from the water and then we're going to sparge. We're going to sprinkle those grains with more water to wash out as many sugars as we can. So I need that water, the liquor, to be at 72 degrees Celsius. If you get it too high, then you're gonna end up adding astringency, so do be careful. Once that's at 72 degrees Celsius, it'll be ready for the lauter once my mash is done. So I'm gonna turn that on now with 30 minutes more of the mash to go. I'll keep checking it, I'll put a lid on it so it's ready for when I want to lauter and sparge. So our mash is complete. We are now going to mash out. This means raising the temperature and stirring it, and this stops the enzymes and starches from converting into sugars. So we want to stop this process so that we can move on to our lautering and sparge. So I finished my mash out. This is nicely done now. Now we're going to move on to lautering and sparging. So we need to remove the grains from this water, which is now called wort, which is full of lovely fermentable sugars. That's going to create our alcohol and our carbon dioxide. We're going to remove it by using a really big sieve and another pot. And then through those grains, we're going to put more water that's going to wash out more sugars. Let's watch that. This usually takes me a while, so I might speed it up for you. So the lauter and the sparge are done. I've now got all of my wort collected into my brewing pot, which in a brewery would be called the kettle. We're now gonna boil it. Now, um, I've gotta watch it because once it starts boiling, if it boils over, you're gonna have a massive sticky mess. But in this boil, we're then gonna add whatever other ingredients we need to add during the boil point. Um, this may be hops, it may be fruit peel or some spices or something like that. You may also want to add some finings like protoflock, which is an Irish moss. Um, that will pull out proteins uh, and things in the beer and clear it up um, afterwards. In this recipe for my American pale ale, um, I'm not gonna add any hops until towards the end, till about the last 20 minutes. I don't want a lot of bitterness in this beer. Um, I just want some of the lovely aromas and flavors from the hops check out my videos about hops to find out when and why brewers add hops to their beers. We're now on to our boil. As you can see, we've got a nice rolling boil happening here. Uh, we do this to sterilize the beer. It also drives off any off flavors and we need it to do this when we add hops at the beginning of the boil um, to isomerize their alpha acids to add bitterness. This beer does not have hops added at the beginning because I don't want it to be very bitter. They are just going to be added at the end. So this is going to boil away for an hour and then we're going to cool it down to the correct temperature for the yeast that we're going to add. Um, so it's getting later in the day because my double rudo is taking quite a long time. So my light has changed. But um, one thing you do need to do towards the end of the boil is get your yeast ready. So I'm using this dried yeast. You can see it in there. But you need to rehydrate it so I've measured out, I only need about half a packet for my amount that I'm brewing. So it's now in this little bowl, add a little bit of warm water, let it start to foam up and then we'll add that to the beer when it is in the fermenter. I'm also ready with my sanitised demijohn there, you can see it's got a thermometer on it. And it's got a funnel and another sieve to catch any extra bits of hop or proteins and things that we don't want to go in the beer. And I've got my airlock ready. All of this is sanitized, ready, because once we cool that beer, we need to keep everything clean and sanitized so we don't get an infection. I've sanitized this all ready to go when the wort is chilled enough for our yeast. So 
the wort is now ready to be chilled. The reason we chill it is so that it is at the correct temperature for our yeast. So I've made an ice bath here in my sink and I've put my, uh, my kettle pot in there. This little doohickey here is my hop spider and my hops are in there. And this is a wort chiller. Now if you're just starting out, you don't need a hop spider or a wort chiller. But they are pieces of kit that you may invest in as you go along. So my wort chiller, that is a spiral of copper piping that attaches to my sink. And then it runs cold water through it and it helps to chill your wort quicker. You want to chill the wort as quickly as possible. So my hop spider is where I put my hops in during the boil and as you can see if i can get you in there that green gunk is a hot pellet so when they were put in they completely dissolved and this stops those from being right in the bottom of your kettle and you having to clean them out so now we're just going to wait for this to cool down to the temperature for our yeast um, and then we can transfer it to a fermenter the work's cooled down really quickly like that for ale yeast, it only needs to be at 20 degrees Celsius. We're now going to transfer it to our glass demijohn, our fermenter, and then we're going to pitch our yeast. So when you add yeast to it, it's called pitching. Here we go. Got a funnel and another sieve. This can be messy. I'm gonna leave a bit of space in this one because I'm gonna drive it. So I need space for it. I'm gonna leave a bit of space in this one because I'm gonna dry hop it. So I need space to put the bag in with the dry hops in, with the hops in. Um, and you also wanna leave a little bit of space in the head because it's gonna foam up as it ferments. So you wanna leave space so it doesn't shoot out the top. We're now gonna aerate our yeast. This is the only time that you want to, uh, oxygen to come in contact with your beer because the yeast will need the oxygen to be able to do its thing. So let's slow you down a bit so you can see me do it. There we go. We're going to put oxygen into our wort, just like this. Now we're going to pitch our yeast. So I'm going to put that funnel back in and we're going to use that to get our yeast into our wort. Here is our yeast. It's gone nice and foamy. I'm just going to slide that in. to seal it up with our airlock and that is ready to go. I'm now going to leave that to ferment for two weeks. I will add the dry hops in um, three days before the end of those two weeks. You don't really want to dry hop for longer than that but that's another video um, and then after two weeks we will get to bottle in. So that is how you homebrew in your kitchen. So here is the final product. I have bottled it into a growth bottle and it's been conditioning for at least four weeks. So let's see what this tastes like. Oh, got good carbonation on it. nice head on it look that's got a lovely head on it i'm really impressed with that head um it's got it's a nice kind of gold color it's hazy there's some nice big fat carbonation bubbles in there i'm really getting the tropical notes from the hops in it like grapefruit bit of pineapple Right, let's have a taste. Oh, 
that's really zesty lots of grapefruit um there's a bit of grassiness to it but it's juicy um i don't think i've ever produced a beer that's really juicy so i'm quite pleased with that uh, let's have another test I'm getting a bit of not quite biscuity but like grainy malt in there it's really well carbonated there's a touch of resiny bitterness that just kind of dries it out quite nicely it's got a moderately dry finish pretty drinkable i am pleased with that has this inspired you to make beer in your kitchen May the 7th is the Home Brewers Association's Big Brew. And if you'd like to start home brewing, check out the video on your screen now for my tips on how to get started.